Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dion and today as you can see by the title we are going to talk about Scandinavian winter fashion. This is a, uh, a video that I wanted to do for a while because where a lot of my winter fashion takes inspiration from. I am going to be taking off the scarf though because it's hot. And for those of you who are new here, you may not know that two summers ago, I actually went to uh, Sweden and Denmark. I was there for about 10 days. Me and my friend Maria went to Falsterbo, Malmo, uh, Stockholm, and Copenhagen, and it was so fun. I loved it so, so much, but obviously by no means does that make me an expert in <laughs> all things Scandinavian. Also, Maria did these flowers. How do you like them? And I have a little plant wall going on. Just something more interesting. Let me know if you like it or not. I really wanted to do this video. I've been a Scandinavia file for a minute now and I'm excited to talk about it. So if you like fashion videos and fashion commentary in general, then make sure you subscribe to this channel because I post videos every Thursday. And with that, let's get into it. I need to get my book. All right, I'm gonna clip you guys to the collarbone just so I can read from my little book here. I know, very, very, Educational. I haven't read from a fashion book in a minute. This is the uh, little book of Huga, The Danish Secrets to Happy Living by Mike Wicking. I absolutely love this book. This was the book that started my affinity for all things Scandinavian um, and Danish and everything. And in here, they do have a little excerpt on Huga clothing and Danish fashion in general. So obviously, Scandinavia is not a monolith <laughs> at all. And I will like try to include uh, street style and videos from all the different Scandinavian countries. But this is sort of like when you type in Scandinavian winter style on like Pinterest or TikTok, what comes up? Not like maybe actual what is happening day to day in different Scandinavian countries or outside of the big cities. So take it with a grain of salt. This is more of a romanticization you know, aesthetification of a style. Very much like the French girl aesthetic. Obviously not every woman in France dresses like that. So take it with a pinch of salt. But yeah, I want to read a little excerpt from this to start since this is what kind of sparked my love of Scandinavian fashion and, and just everything in general. So it starts with casual is key. When it comes to Denmark, casual is key. Danes in general enjoy a casual tone, a casual atmosphere, and a casual dress code. For the casual yet stylish look, many people, including me, go with the combo of a t-shirt or sweater on the inside and then a blazer on the outside. I prefer the ones with leather patches for on the elbows for a hookah professor look. And it goes into how to dress like a Dane. Danish fashion is sleek, minimalistic, elegant, but not highly strung. In many ways, it's a sweet spot between hookah and minimalistic, functional design. And they have the tenets of the of Scandin or Danish fashion in particular. Scarves. Scarves are a must. The golden rule is the bigger the better. So pile that stylish, thickly wrapped scarf on, just one step short of risking neck injuries. Black. Once you get out of the Copenhagen airport, you may think you have walked onto set of a ninja movie. I have to say, we flew into the Copenhagen airport and this was in the summer, so very different from winter, but one of the first things I noticed is like the bright colors. And I think this book is from like 2014 or something. So maybe, you know, Copenhagen fashion has changed a little bit, but I thought that was funny. The next tenant was top bulky, a combination of hand knitted wool sweaters, jumpers, cardigans, and pullovers on top, and then skinny jeans or leggings on the bottom. Lots of layers and obviously woolen socks. And he also mentions a Sarah Lund sweater, which is kind of like a Fair Isle sweater, but it's specifically like referencing a character from a TV drama. That's why I wore this, because I thought it was kind of similar to that. That is the little portion from this book, but I thought it was interesting because though I agree with some of those things, some of those things I didn't find to be accurate of what I saw in Danish style. But of course, I was there for nine days and he lives there and is like CEO of the Happiness Institute in Copenhagen. So who are you gonna trust on the expertise? <laughs> so on social media, there were some things that I found were similar to what was said in that book. Like when you type in Scandinavian winter style, it's like massive scarves, giant coats, loose trousers, Uggs and sneakers. It is a little bit more colorful than what this book describes. But of course, this is just Danish style, doesn't speak for all of the Scandinavian region. <laughs> all right, so the breakdown of 
kind of the Scandinavian winter aesthetic, we'll call it. Colors, lots of like bright pops of color. Obviously the bases are like gray, black, and cream. And color comes in a lot with like the scarf or the sweater. Lots of like baby blue, grass green, tulip pink, and like sporty reds. Icons of the aesthetic, I would say are Elsa Hosk and Matilda Jurf, obviously, but of course there are many more. Designers are like Holtzweiler, Month, Ghani, Acne Studios, and Baumun Fred Garden. Staples of the sort of Scandinavian winter style are loose pants, like PJ style striped pants, lots of thermal layers, cargo pants, cashmere turtlenecks and mock necks, oversized coats, chunky knits, wide leg jeans. The shoes are like bright sneakers or boots, lots of brown Uggs. I saw a lot of brown Uggs and some like statement boots as well. Favorite accessories are like big wool hats, massive scarves, some like neutral gloves or mittens is what I mostly noticed. Big bags, round sunnies and fluffy earmuffs. Like that's what I noticed when I was scrolling through when I was looking and that just could be like what's sort of trendy in winter now as well. Again, take this all with a pinch of salt. So when it, in terms of like getting the look for the Scandinavian style, I will say this is just gonna be for like outside appearances because true Scandinavian winter fashion is going to require like merino wool thermals, like leggings and undershirt. So, and we're not gonna do like all those layers. I think most of us don't live like in negative 20 degrees Celsius weather. This is just for like outside appearances, not necessarily for a Scandinavian winter. But part of the reason why I want to do Scandinavian winter style is because I find that they, I mean, it's cold over there and the, fashion or the you know what you see on the runways or whatever of Copenhagen Fashion Week is so colorful in contrast to like a lot of winter a lot of cold weather so I feel like it's a good way of like doing winter fashion right in New England everyone just has a black coat and it's so dreary because it's just gray outside and then everyone's just wearing black like a funeral so part of the reason why I want to do like the Scandinavian aesthetic is because I feel like people who live in colder climates can take some fun, colorful inspiration from true experts in cold weather. So with that out of the way, I feel like wide leg pants are a big like base for it. If the pants are a neutral color, then you can go for like a fun color sweater or vice versa. So if the pants are like a fun color or like a fun design, you can go for like a more neutral, bigger sweater. But I feel like overall, the sweaters tend to be like quite chunky and oversized and then usually with like a cashmere layer underneath it. And bonus points for stripes. I feel like I saw a lot of stripes and a lot of gingham. Gingham is obviously more of a summery print. Checked is sort of the winter version of gingham, but yeah, a lot of stripes. With the pants, some sort of like contrasting big comfy sweater as well. And a patterned coat or like oversized jacket, like a statement jacket, so lots of like oversized puffers. Obviously there's a lot of classic just black puffers. I'm sure that is what the everyday Scandinavian non-fashion person wears or like a classic wool trench coat. But again, with like the aesthetification, the fashionification of it all, some sort of like cool, like big, cool statement coat. Bonus points if it's like a wool statement coat or like a mohair coat. Holzweiler makes some really cool coats in my opinion. Add a pop of color in like a huge plaid scarf. I mean, obviously the Acne Studio ones are super famous. The Holzweiler ones are also very famous, but yeah, giant, bigger the better, like alpaca or cashmere scarf. And then for like a comfier look, you wanna do Uggs. I mean, Uggs are very popular right now. And you know what, like when you live in a cold climate, I didn't grow up in a cold climate and now I live in one. Sorry, Uggs are convenient. Like you put them on when you walk your dog. Like I'm not an Ugg hater, I get it, I get it. I definitely associate sneakers with not only like European style, but Scandinavian style specifically. Like I feel like they pioneered like the wrong shoe theory by wearing sneakers with suits and stuff. Well not, that's not true. That's not true. That's a very NBA basketball player thing to do. Anyway, <laughs> but I associate like sneakers, um, statement sneakers with uh, like Scandinavian style. So adding that to your winter outfit as well, but obviously that's not always realistic. So then boots is another option, especially if you wanna make it a little bit more elevated. But I feel like in general, the silhouettes are quite loose and comfy. I mean, they're out there fighting for their lives in that cold. I mean, that cold weather is like, it's fierce. So I understand that they're dressing for survival. So the silhouette of like big, bulky and oversized is mostly just like by necessity. 
I understand that. But I, I like almost like over exaggerating it. Like I like that you do the wide leg pants, you do the oversized sweater, you do the oversized coat and the oversized, and you just be like, yep, it's negative a zillion degrees outside and I'm being swallowed up by all my layers. How about you? You know, I like leaning into that. Having lots of comfy, loose layers, having some color, everything being like casual and cool, but still very put together. That's, I think, kind of the tenant of Scandinavian style is like, you're in pajamas, but somehow you could also be working in an office. All right, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry I went up late. Uh, <laughs> yesterday was crazy. Yesterday was Wednesday and that was my filming day and a lot of things happened. So today's Thursday, it's like two o'clock. I don't think this will get up by Thursday, but hopefully it does. Hi, if it's Thursday. So thank you guys for bearing with me. I hope you guys like this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel because I post videos every Thursday. Comment down below what other winter themed videos you want me to do or like fashion topics you want me to cover. Always love hearing from you. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram for more content. And with that, have a happy, happy day. Bye.